Hello everyone, welcome back to Reading with Leanne. We are going to read the book, Sorry. This is by Trudy Ludwig and the illustrations are by Marie J. Manning. So we see a boy, even in the action on the front page, right? We can guess he's saying, sorry. So we can probably guess that this book might be about a person who's saying sorry, but maybe they don't mean it. So opening up this book, let's see what it is about. My friend Charlie is always doing stuff he shouldn't, and he gets away with it, even when he does it on purpose. Like the time he took his sister Anna's favorite school picture and drew a mustache on it. Oh, what did you do? <laughs> Charlie, his mom screeched, say you're sorry to Anna right this instant. And Charlie did what he was told. Sorry but I could tell he didn't mean it. So could Anna. Now, Anna, what do you say to your brother? Her mom asked. A tear dropped onto the ruined photo Anna held in her hands. Honey, you need to forgive him. Anna looked at Charlie. He grinned back. And that's when Anna started to bawl even harder. <laughs> she ran to her room and slammed the door. Charlie turned to his mom. Geez, I said I was sorry. What's her problem? Jack, did you see what happened here between Charlie and Anna? Charlie's mom asked me. I shrugged. I wasn't about to say anything. No way. Before I met Charlie, I was a nobody. The one the other kids ordered to move over in the cafeteria. The first one ignored in class, and the last one picked for teams at recess. Then I was somebody. I was Charlie's friend. I lucked into being his friend when I rescued Charlie's frisbee from Mr. Finkelstein's roof. Charlie thought it was pretty cool that I didn't get caught. Being friends with Charlie wasn't easy. He wanted me to do things I didn't feel comfortable doing. What are you, a goody-goody, he'd say. Besides, it's no big deal, Jack. If you get caught, just say you're sorry. I had to admit, it sounded easy enough. And I was worried that if I didn't do what Charlie wanted, I'd end up being a nobody again. Do not eat for bake sale, mom. Mm -hmm. So one Saturday, I decided to follow Charlie's advice. I'd invited some guys over to toss water balloons in my front yard. Think fast, we'd yell at each other, hoping the balloon would burst when one of us caught it. I had a water balloon in my hand when Charlie spotted my neighbor Mike by his mailbox. Toss it to Mike, said Charlie. Think fast, I shouted. I threw the water balloon to Mike. It was obvious he wouldn't be able to catch it, but I threw it anyway. The balloon first when it hit Mike in the chest. 
Bullseye, said Charlie, and the other kids <laughs> cracked up. Ha ha, very funny, said Mike, all red in the face. Sorry, Mike, I called back. <sighs> yeah, right, he muttered as he walked up his driveway. I thought saying sorry would make me feel better, but it didn't. I felt worse because Mike and I knew that I'd thrown the water balloon at him on purpose. A few weeks later, Charlie and I went to the auditorium to watch kids set up their displays for the science fair. Charlie noticed Lena putting together her styrofoam solar system. He nudged me in the ribs and headed her direction. This is not good, I thought as I followed. Lena, you see, was my friend. At least she was until Charlie came along. I stopped hanging out with her because it didn't look good to be friends with a brainiac girl. I knew this hurt Lena's feelings, but a guy's gotta do what a guy's gotta do to be cool, right? Is this a solar system you're making, said Charlie, as he fingered the styrofoam balls on the table. Lena nodded and kept working on her project. Whoa, these balls are really light, said Charlie, as he grabbed three and started juggling with them. Leave those alone, said Lena. You'll wreck them. Charlie ignored her and continued to juggle. Lena looked at me. I knew she was hoping I'd say or do something to stop Charlie, but I just stood there, watching. Suddenly, Charlie tossed all three balls high into the air and shouted, hey Jack, catch! I tried to catch them all, I really did, but I could only catch one. The other two hit the floor and didn't look so good. You did that on purpose, Lena yelled at Charlie. And you let him, she said, pointing at me. Sorry, we both said. Sorry doesn't cut it, she snapped back. Mr. Marcus. The science teacher came over to see what the commotion was about. What's going on here, he asked. They were messing around with my science project and ruined it, said Lena. We were just having some fun and we already told her we were sorry. Right, Jack? Mr. Marcus looked at me, but I couldn't look him in the eyes. I just stared at my sneakers and wished I were anywhere else. Jack, what do you think Lena's feeling right now about what you did? Mr. Marcus asked me. I looked at Lena and said in a small voice when I saw her face, really mad and sad. Are you truly sorry, boys? Mr. Marcus asked. Like I said, we told her we were sorry, said Charlie. Then show it. What? Show Lena you are sorry by making right your wrong. Charlie stood there, looking confused. I got a feeling, Mr. Marcus, was the first person who ever expected more than a sorry from him. It was obvious Charlie didn't know what to do, but I did. Lena, we're really sorry for ruining your science project. Then I turned to Charlie. Come on, 
let's go to the art room and get some more styrofoam glue and paint. It took us a while to fix the mess we'd made with Lena's planets. Oh, man, this is a lot of work, said Charlie, as he put the finishing touches of colors on Mars. I know, said Lena. Charlie was quiet after that. And when we were finally done, Charlie asked if I wanted to shoot some hoops with him and the other guys. No thanks, I said. I'm gonna stick around and help Lena clean up. She smiled. That's when I knew Lena believed I was sorry for what I did. Hey, Lena? What? I think your project is out of this world. She rolled her eyes. Get it? It's out of this world, which means two meanings. First of all, it means it's awesome. But second of all, it makes sense here because it's in space. It's not <laughs> in Earth. Come on, wise guy, she said. I'll race you back to the snack bar. Loser buys. Deal, says Lena. Deal, he says. And that is the end of our so there is an afterword at the back here um, that I think is really important to read uh, if you have this book at home. And it, it talks about an apology and how apologies are really important. And how apologies, they're usually four parts. Um, we have to understand what we did was wrong. We can explain maybe why we did it. Uh, we can express shame or remorse, right? We could show um, that we feel bad, and we can offer reparation. So how do we make it right? As Mr. Marcus, the science teacher, asked. So there's a wonderful afterword here to read, and also a note from the author, some questions for discussion, and some apologies, do and don'ts. So what to do when you're apologizing and what not to do. If you have this book at home, I think it's really worthwhile to go through the activities at the back here uh, and just read a little bit further. This is a wonderful book. It's called Sorry. This is by Trudy Ludwig and the illustrations are by Maureen J. Manning. Thank you so much for reading along with me.